Alu Akbar. God is the greatest. God is great, or so we shout, leaping righteously at each other's unbelieving throats. And why not? For has he not revealed only to us, his chosen people, his living word? He grants us access to an inner strength that our fearful minds are otherwise denied. He relieves us of the monstrous uncertainty that envelops us in this frightening universe. Of course we must raise arms to defend his loving message against the teeming infidel. Quite naturally, our God is male and no foolish mother nature or some sexless spirit. We can go forth sealed in the ironclad certitude arising out of our mindless prayers. Allahu Akbar, and he seriously does say to cover women's faces and to grow out your beards. Faith and prayer will be answered. If not in this world, then in the paradise to come. God remains great even if others twist and pervert his word to their selfish and greedy ends. Yes, he commends you to martyr your hopeless life while spokesmen make his videos. Obviously, he has taken an active interest in your stand on the sanctity of marriage. All our seemingly pointless hate and death and war really are his divine will being done. We greet each other, my unsmiling brothers, with the phony shibboleth of an Alu Akbar. He grants us dispensation to quote him freely, out of context, as meets our selfish needs. Then again, our Lord Shiva adorns our missiles, and his fellows sanctify our sick but cozy caste system. Private internal dialogue with our personal Christian saviors yield irrevocable and guilt-free decisions. For he gave us the Inquisition, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and the New World Holocaust. Acting in his name, they pimp various paradises, which require only a simple but total faith. Twisting the fiction of his word, they channel our trusting belief towards their need to power. Yes, God is still great, and the truth he revealed is absolutely no invention of man. We can stone disobedient women and burn the heretical at the stake in his name. Given their active imaginations, there is nothing in their commands that our faith cannot justify. Yes, we know evil when it raises its head, and we recognize that the great Satan is among us. He watches over us all, tallying our sins and working in mysterious ways to test our faith. He knows all beforehand, sees everything, yet still awaits our decision to accept him. And if you pray, dogmatic, if you pray for dogmatic guidance for long enough, he'll probably speak with you as well. What a burden of anxiety lifted and awful guilt over our actions reforged into a seamless pride. You can safely let go your fate into his hands, reciting Alua Akbar until you pass away. But you must listen when others tell of his commands that the enemy be destroyed, for this is a non-negotiable package deal from which you must accept all or burn in hell forever. Oh yes, and don't forget that you'll also receive a personal relationship with your Savior. So, if you play by the rules, you can live happily and get to dwell in heaven forever. Right, and we'll throw in assorted ancient dusty prophets, mysteries, and miracles. You can lose your fear of death and accept all their horrors as simply part of God's will. God is great, and he can use your fears if you just blindly grant him and us your fictional souls.